Amen. Welcome y'all to Thursday Night Bible Study. And we're going to begin in just a moment. Pull up my notes for this evening. And once again say welcome. Welcome to you who are viewing online. Uh, let's open up with a word of prayer. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you tonight to say thank you. Thank you, Lord God, for another day, another time and opportunity to gather in this fashion to study your holy word. We pray, O oh God, that your presence will be felt. We pray, God, that you would open our ears, hearts, and minds to receive um, what you have. May we discover, uncover, and rediscover your truth on the pages of your holy writ. And God, at the end of the day, you get the glory, honor, and the praise. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah, y'all. Another, another day that the Lord has kept us, and, and I'm grateful um, to be here this evening uh, so that we can study God's Word together. Um, so tonight, it's it's somewhat interesting because, I mean, there was, there was stuff I wanted to teach, or there was a particular way I wanted to go, but um, God said, no, nah, that's not what you did do. Um, and it's uh, interesting how that sometimes works. Um, what the Lord really impressed upon my heart for us to kind of look at in terms of uh, topic or title or thought, if you will, is something that's very present or prevalent for us today, for Hope Church, right? Uh, and that's transition. It's a transition somewhere in the midst of what we've been uh, going through, what we've been dealing with, what we've been exploring. Um, but the past, I guess now, almost two years, um, 18 months, something, something like that. Um, and so we're going to look at that. We're going to look at that, 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 uh, that word and, and kind of what that means for us now and in the future. Amen. So I went to the dictionary and I looked up the word transition. Before I give it to you, what are your thoughts? What do you think the word transition means? Change. Change. Yes? No? <laughs> Moving from one state to the next. Moving from one state to the next. Then look at look. Y'all see what that college education is doing? <laughs> Moving from one state to the next. Okay. Yeah. The 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 I guess book definition is the process or a period of changing from one state or condition to another. Our synonyms are change, move, or what we in the church like to say is shift. Right? We like that word, shift. You'll you know, see that sometimes as, as, as a theme, you know, for an entire year. We're shifting it. You know, God is shifting. And that's, that's cool. That, that's real. So transition, the process of, or a period of changing from one state or condition to another. And so life is full of transition, right? Just look at the life cycle, our human life cycle. We're, we're conceived, right? That's pregnancy. Uh, we're born, and then there's infancy, right? And that's that cute phase, I guess. It's a little baby. Um, and then we get to the toddler phase. And now we're chasing after and running around and and they're getting into stuff, and then you have the, the child, you get the adolescent, and you're like, oh Jesus, what am I dealing with here? Who is this person? Right? Then you get to adulthood, young adulthood, right? We're, we're, we're older, we've got some responsibility now, maybe we got a job, maybe we got an apartment, you know, things of that nature. We got a bank account. Uh, <laughs> We can write checks, <laughs> you know, we're paying taxes, those sorts of things. Then we get into that middle adulthood, middle age, where maybe we've, we've had children and they're now coming of age and, and we're looking into, you know, some other things. Our parents are maybe in need of care um, because now they're getting older. And so, you know, as, as, as children or adults, adult children, you know, you have that responsibility. Then there's the um, old age, right? Where you're, uh, what, they, what do they call it? In the, the golden years, right? You've made your contribution. 
uh, to society. Uh, now, you know, you're retired probably, you're living out the rest of your days uh, doing whatever it is you want to do, uh, and you're moving forward until the Lord calls you home. Right? So life itself is full of transition from moving uh, from one state or condition to another. Right? And um, the Bible is full of transition. The Bible is full of change. The Bible is full of moving from one state or position to another. Thank you so much. Appreciate that. See y'all when we're back in the fellowship hall, we can we can have coffee. <laughs> So it's important to understand that, you know, change, transition, movement from, what you say, from one to another? One state to the next. Movement from one state to the next, right? That's, it, that's inevitable. That's going to happen whether we want it to or like it or not. The challenge that we have is, is, is not the if or when, but the how. Right? How does that happen? What does that look like? You know, how does it feel, right? When we're at the place of moving from one state or position to the next, right? How does that how does that look? Um, and so we're gonna we're gonna look at it um, really in in Israel's early history, I should say. Uh, we're gonna look at Moses and Joshua. So we're going to kind of skip around a little bit, but for the most part, we're going to be planted at the end of Deuteronomy. So you can, uh, let's, let's look at Deuteronomy 31. How you doing, sis? God bless you. Deuteronomy 31. So Moses continued to speak these words to all Israel, and he said to them, I am 120 years old today. Now, back then, that really wasn't that big a deal, <laughs> right? 120 was probably like, oh, I don't know, 65? You know, he was an older man, but 120, not that big a deal. He was in that middle, well, probably like late adulthood, not quite old, old age, but he was, he was on the way out. And he says, I am no longer able to go out and come in. Right? That's just a nice way of saying that. I can't do what I used to do, y'all. Right? I um, was just thinking about the other day, looking at some pictures, and I was like, man, actually today I was going through photos, uh, my wife's timeline, and looking at our, our babies. I was looking at my oldest who's here, and, I, and it was a picture of her in fifth grade. And I'm like, wow, you know, just seeing the transition, seeing how, and thinking of myself, like how I had energy, <laughs> right? how I was able to kind of move a little bit faster and, and, you know, do some things. And now, you know, not so much, you know, I'm not, you know, I can still do stuff, but not as quick as I used to, right? And, and you start to reflect and you start to, you know, think about these transitions, these points or these movements from one thing to the next or one state to the next. And so Moses is here at the end of his tenure as the leader of Israel. He is God's appointed leader for Israel. And he's saying, listen, I can't go in, I can't come out like I used to. The Lord has said to me, he's given me this instruction, you shall not go over this Jordan. The Lord your God himself will go over before you. Right? So he's saying, listen, you got them here, but you're not going with them. I'm going to go before them because that's what God does. He goes before us. God is omnipotent. God is omniscient and God is omnipresent, right? Meaning that God is everywhere all the time. There's never a point in our time in the chronos, or chronos that God will not be. The God who stands outside of time will always be in time. And guess what? Always on time. That's a word right there. Right? So he's there. God's saying, I'm going before you, 
and I'm going to meet you. Like, I'm here in your present, but you're going to meet me in your future because I'm already there. How amazing is that? No other God can say that. So that's what he's saying here in this text. He's saying, listen, I'm going before you. He will destroy these nations before you so that you shall dispossess them, and Joshua will go over at your head as the Lord has spoken. Now, understand this. God says, this is the land that I'm giving to you. Now, there are people there. And for those that, you know, read it, some folks read it in this way. Well, was God, you know, like, you know, committing genocide? Because weren't these people already there? No, God was actually promoting his justice. These were people that had done him and his people wrong. So those people continue to exist. He didn't completely wipe them off the face of the earth. He didn't totally, utterly destroy them, right? Because God is a merciful God. God is a God of both love and justice. And the problem that we have is we can't hold those two in complete tension. Because remember, I've said this before, and I usually think about it myself. If you do me wrong, I want justice immediately, right? Have you ever been driving and you slow down and then somebody rolls through and you're like, man, where the police at? I wish they was there to catch that person because they shouldn't have did that and they should be punished. And then later, same scenario, you run that joker. It, it ain't like yellow. <laughs> it's hard red. And you go through and you just like, oh, thank God. Thank God I'm good, right? You, you just, you waiting for them a few seconds to make sure that the, you know, boop, boop, ain't, ain't coming behind you, right? That's our human, that's, that's us. That's us as human beings. But see, God is not like that. God is merciful to both of the, both in, in both scenarios, right? Giving grace and mercy. But see, we, and, and thank God we're not God because otherwise we, you know, you know, some people would pass and others wouldn't, you know, it just be depending on, you know, it could be depending on our attitude that day. Oh, I feel good today, so I'm going to get everybody to pass on. You know what? My heart is broken, so all of you all are suffering. Everybody's got to suffer my wrath. Right? So, so, so he's saying, I'm going to go ahead and clear the way for you because Joshua's coming through and he's going to be able to, to push this thing forward. So verse 4 says, And the Lord will do to them as he did to Sion and Og, kings of the Amorites, into their land when he destroyed them. And the Lord will give them over to you, and you shall do them according to the whole commandment that I have commanded you. Be strong and courageous. Do not fear or be in dread of them. I have commanded you. Excuse me. Do not fear or be in dread of them. For it is the Lord your God who goes with you. He will not leave you or forsake you. What an awesome and powerful message to a new leader, but also those that would be under his charge, right? So here it is, Moses, again, prophet, priest, well, prophet, leader, right, speaking as, as, as God is giving him, right, about the future, right? He's telling them in the present what's going to happen, that God is going to be with you. So in those, in those times of transition, in those moments of changing from one state to the other, he says, be strong and courageous. Do not fear or dread the people, right? Don't fear the future. Remember, we pray, fear ye not. Stand still. And guess what? Right now, we're at, we're at the third part because we're in June, right? We're going to see the salvation of the Lord. And I'm getting ahead of myself a little bit, but... <laughs> That, that's, we're, we'll get there. But we're, he, he's saying, listen, I, if I went before you, if God goes before you, right, if he's already there in the future, even if you got to go through some challenges, even if during the transition or the, the, that, that movement from one place to the other, the thing that we have to remember, the thing that we have to like plan ourselves in is that God is with us, right? That God goes not just with us, but God goes before us. So if God is with us and before us, it's like we're covered completely. There's no place or no spot that we'll encounter where it's like God's not here. Now, are there times where it feels like God is silent? Absolutely. Absolutely. There are times where God doesn't answer. 
at least for us. We feel like, oh, God, I ain't saying nothing. I don't hear him talking back. And God communicates with us. Even, even when we don't hear him, he's still communicating. Right? I, I'm, I'm learning as, as, I'm, as I'm growing and, and, and moving and right, maturing in Jesus Christ. Um, that it doesn't always come when I want it. And it certainly doesn't come necessarily the way that I want it. Right? That sometimes, you've, you've heard this before. Anybody that's on the internet now, anybody that has Facebook, Instagram, whatever. You've heard this before. Like, I pray for patience. Right? And God doesn't just give you patience. He gives you opportunities to be patient. Right? He gives you opportunities to grow. And Lord have mercy if I ain't missed some of them things. Like, oh, that was supposed to increase my patience. Or that was supposed to give me, you know, strength or encourage me to, you know, in my forgiveness. Right? Or unforgiveness. It's like we miss that stuff. And thanks be to God that it, you know, kind of brings it back around and, and you're still praying. Yes, ma'am. If you think about it, it makes more sense the way God does it because if you say, okay, God, give me patience, and then it just happened like that. Just say, okay, whoop, you got patience. So you think, okay, go down here and grocery store. This ain't going to get on my nerves. No, you go into the grocery store. They ain't going to get on your nerves. People are going to be driving slow. It's, the, it's almost like the, the building, like testing. Would you ask them? Absolutely, right? God, <laughs> when we ask God, you know, so, so, and, and it's nothing wrong. God, increase, increase, like Jabez, increase my territory or increase my finances. And then God gives you like a little bit more money. It may not be a lot, right? You go, you, you may get a little extra cash somewhere and then God says, okay, let me see what you're going to do with it. And, and that sale comes. Or you get that email or text from that vendor, like, oh, I've been waiting on this, man. You know, 50% off. Hey, yeah, let me let me go ahead. And it's like, wait, but you wanted more money, right? So it's like, here's the opportunity for you to grow. And sometimes we miss it, y'all. But again, God is gracious and he gives us other another opportunity. Undeserved, right? Not that he has to do it, but he brings it back around because he wants us to grow. He wants us to trust in him with our whole heart, right? So that when those times come, we remember that. You remember, oh man, you know what? I didn't have, I, I, I didn't have it, but then God gave it to me and I was faithful in it and with it. And so now, if you know, coming back, when it comes back again, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll continue in that way. And it's like, now it's habit. You don't even think about it now. It's just like because you've been doing it over and over and over again, it happens. It's just like natural, right? Amen. So uh, verse 7, um, Deuteronomy 31, verse 7, says, Then Moses summoned Joshua and said to him in the sight of all Israel. So now, right, he's, 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 he's personalizing this thing. Moses is in front of, is, is got Joshua right there. Prior to that, he was talking to the entire assembly. He was talking to Israel. Like, listen, y'all should be happy about this transition because this is what's going to happen. He didn't, in my mind, I mean, he said, look, I'm not going with you. And I'm not about to, like, infer what his emotional state was at that point because that's poor uh, biblical um, exegesis, right? That's reading into the text. That's me putting my thought on the text. What you want to do is look at where he is, what's going on, and just read it for what it is. Right? He's at this assembly saying, this is what's going on. Now, Joshua, now future leader, here's what I want to tell you. He repeats, but now specifically to him. Be strong and courageous, for you shall go with this people into the land that the Lord has sworn to their fathers to give them, and you shall put them in possession of it. Right? Not me. I, I'm not doing it. My task is done. God is my, I've completed my work, right? I've, I've been faithful to God and I've done what I was supposed to do. But God has called you now, Joshua, to now be in leadership and take these folks further than I would have. Transition, right? 
the movement from one movement from one state to the next. one state to the next. See, I'm getting it, baby. <laughs> We're moving from one state to the next, one space to the next, right? Uh, verse eight. It is the Lord who goes before you. He will be with you, right? He's just really personalizing these things. He's restating it, but now it's like, listen, you all have, you all have privy Israel to hear what I'm saying to him, right? That public conversation is not private, but it's still public because I want him to hear it, and I want you all to hear me say to him the same thing that I'm telling you. So it's not that Moses was mad at Joshua. It's not that he was upset with God. He really desperately wanted Joshua to be prepared as he moved forward. And the same thing that God is speaking to us now, saints, is he wants us, he wants me, right, to be prepared as we move forward as a body into the next phase of this ministry, right? So all of this, again, I wanted to teach something different, but God was like, no, we're going to talk about this tonight because it's 50 days from today until installation. And I was like, are you serious? I'm like, wow, that's that's right around the corner, Lord. You know, can we extend that out a little bit? But no. We as a we as a as a uh, a, a body, we as a local assembly, um, have to be on one accord with each other, right? And I believe we are. I'm not this is not to suggest that we're not, but it is just kind of like this emphasis or re-emphasizing of what God promised what God was doing then it's he's still doing it to this very day if I don't know if you've noticed but there in this particular year 2022 have been a lot of retirements and installations there's been tons of churches that have their their senior pastor has retired has has moved on and now there are these new pastors being installed because it just Right now is a season of transition. And um, that may be in part due to COVID, right? COVID may have accelerated that. Um, but there's other things as well. I think God is, you know, throughout the land, transitioning, moving people from one place to the other, right? And giving those who paved the way their rest, their well-deserved, well-earned rest. All right? But back to this, this whole idea of transition, right? Transition, change, is not always comfortable. It's not always easy, right? And I always go back to the example of my children. When I had one, right? Hey, you know, it, it was a little bit easier because you got one, and you're paying attention and they, they get all your love and everything, right? And then you add a second. Now, number one, right, is a transition. Because they're no longer by themselves. They now have to share with this second person, right? So it's a ending for the one and a beginning for the two. But as a parent, it's, it's now, again, it's an ending of just this one and this beginning of two. And so that happened several times. <laughs> and, and, and children often, when they don't, you know, when they can't necessarily express themselves or articulate themselves verbally, they do it in other ways, right? You will often see the older sibling sometimes regress to a younger state because what they're trying to do is get your attention. They're trying to get back what they lost because the transition is difficult or uncomfortable. They don't, they, 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 they can't tell you in words, I'm, I, I like this, but I really don't like it. Right? <laughs> And that's it, and that happens, right? And and sometimes even listen, I'm not talking about hope. I'm just talking about generally. Sometimes in these type of transitions, there are folks that will regress. 
that'll go back and, and start to act a different, a, a certain way because they're like, mm, I'm not so sure. You know, I liked it when we did this. I liked it when when we we said that. I liked this state, right? But if you track just even with our church, how many different, how many floods have we had, right? How many times have we had to pull up carpet, you know, put put pews down or or bring hammer and nail or look now we got uh, 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 different flooring right some folks like you know that I want it to be a particular way and God saying listen transition not a bad thing change not a bad thing we struggle because we are human beings with limited uh, limited ability let's just say it like that right um, and, and we wrestle with this with this tension. There's this tension that comes. We're confident, but we're also doubtful. We're confident because of God, but we're doubtful because of us. Or we allow us to block and blind our confidence in God. Okay. So let's, let's kind of look at that. Um, if I had a board, I would write it out, right? So what I want, want you all to imagine, right, is on this side is the constancy, the consistency, the steadfastness, and immutability, right, unchangeability of God. That's over here. And over on this side, juxtaposed to, to God, is the frailty and uncertainty of our existence. Right? Over here, we're uncertain because we're frail, we're human, we're, we're, we're fallible. Right? We will have an end. God, no end whatsoever. Right? Eternal, self-existent. You can't put a time stamp on God. Right? If you created the God, then it's not a God. Right? <laughs> That's not a God. That's just a, that, that's an idol, as the Bible would say, right? So let's look at this and hold these two intentions, right? This confidence that we have in an eternal, all-powerful God and the doubt that we have in our abilities, in our, in our thinking, in our, in our seeing, right? Because we could see, um, we, could, we could see this thing. God could tell us, listen, you're going to make it over that river. But we see the river. And it's like, okay, I can't swim. I ain't got no boat. <laughs> how, how am I going to get over there? Right? So it's the doubt for us against the confidence we have in God. Let's look at the, let's look at, at the Bible. Here's what we're going to bounce around a little bit. Somebody go to Hebrews 13 and 8. Hebrews 13 and 8. Dad joke. How did Jesus make coffee? Mm -hmm. Hebrews. One of the greatest joys of my life is being a father. You know, it's just, it just is. And she made me a dad first. So. You got it? Hebrews 13 and 8? Somebody read it, please. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Jesus Christ is what? The same, the same today, today, yesterday, excuse me, yesterday, today, and forevermore. Constant, right? steadfast, immutable, right? Jesus does not change, okay? 2 Thessalonians 3 and 3. We're going to be jumping, so hang with me. 2 Thessalonians 3 and 3. But the Lord is faithful who will establish you and guard you from the evil one. 2 Thessalonians Amen. But the Lord is what? Faithful. Say that again. But the Lord is faithful. 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 God is faithful. That's not like a, that's, that's not a, there's nothing, there's, you don't need to interpret that, right? We don't have to wonder, right? There's no room for error or, or for, for, um, for interpretation there. But the Lord is faithful and he will strengthen you and protect you from the evil one. 
That is the steadfastness, the constancy, the consistency, the immutability of God. Y'all can go home and look that word up. <laughs> All right, Isaiah 40 and 8. is with their children's children. You see how that just continues exponentially, right? Unto generations. So it's in, it was incumbent upon previous generations. I'm going to just say it now. I know that somebody in, in my, down the line was praying, right? Down the line I was praying for, for my father and praying for my grandfather and praying for my great-grandfather, right? Asking God, to answer a prayer. I am the answer to some of one of my ancestors' prayers. I just believe it. 
And I believe that we all are. As we live and breathe, as we exist in this world, we are the answer prayer of our ancestors. The very fact that we can sit in this building um, unmolested, right, without this restriction or limitation is an answer to prayer. So we see the, again, constancy, the consistency, the steadfastness, the what? Immutability of God. Amen. Somebody grab Psalm, uh, Psalm 90. Read verses 1 and 2. presence of God. Again, that you can't put a time stamp on the Lord. There's no point in our history that we can say, oh, that's where God existed. And you know, there are people that want to say, well, you know, how can, how can, you know, you're just creating this God. You know, you, you're the, you, it, if he was true, then, then there, there would have been a, a time that he uh, was born. Well, you know, or that he came from something, or you know, he just couldn't have been there. Well, that's when we use our limited minds, right? That's when we're operating in, in, in the realm of, of logic and reason. If you ground yourself in logic and reason, then yeah, that won't make no sense. But when you are a people of faith, well, then it doesn't necessarily have to make natural sense, right? God is, there's evidence of God everywhere. There's no way that the earth is positioned in its place away from the sun, right? Perfectly positioned where we're able to receive heat and, 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 and cold, right? Where we can spin on an axis, right? And not be thrown off because we're going too fast or, or too slow. There's no way that there isn't, if, even if you only believed in intelligent design, well, there's a designer, right? These words on this book didn't just, on the Bible didn't just appear. Somebody put them there, right? Somebody said, let there be, and it was. The only one who was able to say that is our God, right? So God is constant, consistent, steadfast, immutable, right? That's him over here. That's the, the confidence that we have. Now we're going to look at us. Okay? The other side, right? The tension, right? The, 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 the confidence of God, but then the doubt in ourselves that we allow to rise to the surface and, and sometimes lead us um, away from what God, away from our knowledge and understanding of God. Right? So this is a juxtaposition to the constancy, the immutability of God. We have this frailty, this uncertainty in our existence. Same, same, um, same uh, psalm, Psalm 90. Go to verse 12. Read verse 12. So teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. What do we think that means? So it, it, just just on, on the surface, and it's not really even deep. Just what, what is that saying to us? Understand who God is, okay? What else? Every day that I'm alive, you know, give me the wisdom that I may know you or live right or do better, but each day that I'm alive. Absolutely. You all are Bible scholars and y'all going so deep right now. It is even simpler than that. That text is simply just saying life is short. Yeah. That's it. Help us understand that life is short. We talk, you know how people say, like, oh, I'll get, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll think about it, you know, I'll get it done. Wait, life is short, right? 
the wisdom part. Teach me, right, to number my days so that I may gain wisdom because it's like, Lord, I don't have time to play around. We don't have time Amen. to play around and, and put off holy living, Amen. righteous living. We, you know, I used to think, and um, just a quick story. So when I was about 15, 16 years old, I was at my church, and, the, and my pastor, he, he said, hey, if you feel like God is calling you to leadership, stand up. And, you know, I'm looking around, you know, like that person, like, like most... And, you know, whenever there's a call to do something, you're just like, it's not me. <laughs> but knowing it's really you, and you're just kind of like waiting for somebody to be the first to do it. Um, and they, they did, and I just, I remained seated. And I, I, I got a, you know, request to come to see him in his office that same day, or the after service. And so, you know, he looked at me, and we're talking, and he said, Jay, when I asked, you know, about leadership, why don't you stand up? He says, I know you. I know there's a calling on your life. I know that God has called you to, to be in leadership. I said, I'm not ready. I said, um, you know, I don't have it all together. You know, I'm, I'm a teenager and, you know, I, what do I know? You know, I'm just, I, when, I, I, you know, when I'm, when I'm ready, when I'm right, that's when I'm. And he said, and I remember, he's like, that's, that's, that's the trick of the enemy. No one is ever ready. No one is ever completely right because we're human. The Bible says that there, was, there is none that is righteous, right? We, uh, what is it, Romans 3.23, for all have sinned and have fallen short of God's glory, right? We, we miss the mark. And every leader that you look at in the word of God missed the mark from, from the arguably greatest apostle, you know, Paul certainly missed the mark um, to, to, you know, whoever whoever you think of they missed the mark so teach us a number of days means, listen I ain't got time to play around with y'all I got to get it now because I need to live for the Lord, I think uh, uh, Pastor Bright says live with the end in mind, right that you're living as if right now God could call me home and that's actually what they did in the biblical narrative. Most of those folks, even when we got to, you know, the New Testament, when Christ um, was resurrected and the Apostle Paul began to preach, uh, you know, the, the, the apostles began to preach, they were preaching as if Christ was returning, like, that day and encouraging the people to get it right now, do it right, right now. But see, that's the thing. Again, when we look at that in, 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 in tension with, with, with God, right, we worry. We use that now as, well, I need to focus on the other stuff, right, rather than focus on the God stuff. I got to take care of this now because if I don't, then I'm going to miss it. When God is like, if you focus on the God stuff, that other stuff gets taken care of too. But we don't think that way, right? We, 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 because of our, our mindset, right? So again, and, and we're talking about, again, just reminding you, we're talking about transition. We're talking about the movement from one position to the other, one phase to the other. We're talking about change, right? So the fear that we have in, the, in that process comes because we, we sometimes think that we're going to miss out on whatever it is that our heart is desiring in that moment. Because guess what? Our heart desire changes really from day to day, <laughs> minute to minute. You know? One day you want steak, the next day you want chicken. <laughs> right? One day, you know, you may, <laughs> you may see this item that you really want to purchase, and then the next day you're like, that's totally impulsive. I don't even want that no more. Right? So it's like, it happens. That's because it's gone. <laughs> That's because it's gone, yeah. <laughs> well, if you're, if you're like my wife, you have a cart full of, her Amazon cart is just always full, right? And that stuff stays there. <laughs> Which actually I'm not going to complain about. 
Thank God, you know. Yeah, you're right. you're right. Praise God. Right. Praise God, man. Yeah. <laughs> but that's that's us, right? Yeah. Um, go to James four and fourteen, and somebody keep me on time because I, I forgot my watch. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no. <laughs> that, well, when you ain't in here forever, you know, forget. <laughs> Big old clock over there. Hey, Amen. James 4 and 14. Whereas you do not know what will happen tomorrow, but what is your life? There's even a vapor that appears, that appears for a little time and then vanishes away. Again, right? I, I I don't James James again. He, he's talking to this 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 diaspora, this group of, of Jews and Gentiles, or I should say, uh, Christians who, who are Jewish and Gentile Christians, right? Just spread out, telling, encouraging them to to not focus on the trivialness of life, right? The the things that are just kind of frivolous. Um, and that's not to say that we don't hear, don't hear me saying that we should go after things that we want, right? Like um, education, and va vacations, you know, all those things, whatever. It's not like I'm saying, or he was even saying, that. My understanding is that more so is those things should not be your motivation, right? Because, again, you never know the moment, the day, the time, the hour that your life will end. We don't. The thing that God shared with me, and I thought it was just revolution or, or just, just radical, honestly, uh, one day is the moment that we are conceived is the moment that we are on our way to death. Right? The moment that he says yes to our lives is the moment that the clock starts on the end of our life. And so when... You know, especially working in the hospital, we have this, this, you know, saying, you know, the question is, is the patient actively dying? And I'm just like curious, like we're all actively dying. We're just um, doing it at a different pace in a different way. Um, but that's thinking spiritually, right? Um, so if we, from the moment we are born, are on our way to meet our God, then again, same thing as the psalmist was saying, we don't really have time to, to, to worry about those frivolous things, right? So in the transition, our focus should be on getting the work done, on moving forward in the plan of God, right? So when Moses, back to our original text, uh, Deuteronomy 31, uh, and when he says, when he repeats publicly, Deuteronomy 31, uh, 7, then Moses summoned Joshua and said to him in the sight of all Israel, Be strong and courageous, for you shall go with the people into the land that the Lord has sworn to their fathers to give them, and you shall put them in possession of it. It is the Lord who goes before you, and he will be with you. He will not leave you nor forsake you. Do not fear or be dismayed. He was saying, that's your focus. There's where you put your trust and your confidence. So remember that the Lord is constant, consistent, steadfast, immutable, right? Not changing. Though you're going to change, though your circumstances are going to change, though the land that you're living in is going to change, right? Even the way in which we do things will change. But what will not is the message and the master. That will never change. God is the same as he's always been. And his message remains the same. Right? That's the thing that we have to remember as well. So when he says be strong, because and, and maybe if we get back to it on another teaching, we'll go back and talk about the blessings and the curses. But the one thing that Moses emphasized to Joshua and to the people was to keep the law. Right? to meditate on that thing, to remember it, to keep it, to obey it, to observe it, right? So that when they went through and continued forward, right, 
even though the, the, the scene changed, even though the surrounding changed, that was the same. Their God, the message from their God, their relationship with their God, the only thing that, you know, was different was where they were, right? Where their foot um, walked. Yep. Yeah, I was, I was just thinking about Moses in that, in that particular scripture. I believe, if I'm correct, that was the point at which Moses knew he wasn't going in uh, and didn't want to see the people that he loved go off track any further than they already had. I mean, he, he actually suffered the consequences of his own anger over them and their constant grumbling, complaining, so forth and so on. He started, started doing things on his own. He was going ahead of God. Um, but what, what I liked about that part of the, the situation was that he could have just been angry. <laughs> you know, if, if he was mm -hmm. acting in his flesh. He could have just been pissed off with these people that really cost him everything. He, had, he, had, he didn't want this job. He didn't want to be leading them. He didn't want to do any of this. And at the end of all of his hard work, God said, you're not going in. Right. But, but God told him that the people were gone. And that was enough for him to give the directive, the guidance to Joshua to make sure that they weren't losing steam, that they weren't losing sight. That's what I like to have. Absolutely. Well, here's, here's, here's where I kind of want to end it. I mean, where I think we should uh, put a pin in it, right? We, we, bringing it to our, our prayer focus for this month, the month of June, which is see the salvation of the Lord. Right? We uh, prayed in May, fear not, fear ye not. And then in March, uh, no, excuse me, in April, April, what am I, oh my God, April, yeah. was fear ye not. May was stand still. And now June is see the salvation of the Lord. Right? So to your point, what you were kind of alluding to, right, uh, is God showed Moses a preview of the promise. I want y'all to yes. write that down. Yes. God showed Moses a preview of the promise. So here it is, his, his chance to go with them or be the one to take them into the promised land. He forfeited that when he disobeyed God. And again, we can, we can observe the movement of the text and, and say that, he reacted rather than responded. He reacted to the people's mumbling and grumbling rather than responded to what God had already told him. Okay? And that essentially sealed the deal and disqualified him from entering the promise. However, God was gracious. See, it wasn't, and we gotta, thank you, Lord, we gotta see this as a blessing and not like, haha, look, you, I'm going to show you what you can't have. No. Not, absolutely not. It was God, right? Abraham didn't see the fulfillment of God's promise to him other than Isaac, right? Abraham didn't know about Moses. He didn't see that. Abraham didn't even, wouldn't have, he wouldn't have seen them go into the land, right? So God is saying, listen, I'm going to show you that I'm, a, I'm keeping my word. The blessing that I, I, I bestowed, yes, yes, the, the yes. promise that I made yes, to your yes. ancestor is now being fulfilled. Yes, sir. So you should celebrate yes, and rejoice sir. that that's happening, yes, right? And so we as a, as a body, right, it, bring it back to hope. We right now, I know, I think, part of this year we're in celebration we're not there yet but we're getting there but our hearts should be filled with joy as God is fulfilling a promise that I didn't know about <laughs> he told a man 30 some odd years ago 
that you're going to start a church. And God did that. And now we're continuing to move forward with what God promised. And the wonderful thing is that he gets to see it. That God is allowing him to see the promise. Right? Now he's not going to die. <laughs> because cause in this story, in this story, you know, Moses, the, the, the Bible said it, he, you know, it was time for him to go away. Time for him to be with the ancestors. That's not that's not our, that's not the story, right? This is a little this is, that's not that story. That's not that story. Right? But it is God's, it is God's, it is God's grace. Really, that was his grace to Moses. To say, look, I'm showing you what I'm going to let the people go and inhabit. And, and your son in ministry, the one that I call, the one that you prayed and consecrated. Because if you read, commission rather, if you read uh, 31, uh, look at, if you just go from 14 down, right? And do that when you get home. That was God publicly affirming Joshua as the leader over the people and telling him, to, you know, do what you're supposed to do. Now, sidebar, side note, in there, God says, they're going to get in this land and they're going to act a fool. <laughs> so Moses, I want you to write a song as a witness to what I said. So Moses writes this song, like, it's, it's, it's like, you know, got lyrics like, hey, y'all, y'all going to get in the land and act a fool because uh, I, I told you, right, blessings, cursing. If you do this, then I'll do that. But if you don't do this, then this was going to happen, right? So just interesting to me, it's like, okay, God, you told Joshua don't fear and be with us. But then you said these people don't act the fool. So I can only imagine what he was feeling, right? <laughs> but, but that's just, you know, that's side, sidebar. So again, transition. It's not always easy. It's not always comfortable. But it's a part of our existence. It's a part of the process, right? We, you can't stay a baby, right? We can't stay infants. We can't stay adolescents. We have to mature. We have to grow, right? Spiritually, you can't just drink milk. At some point, your teeth come in, and you need to be able to chew some meat. Because the milk ain't going to sustain you anymore. Right? We are in a place where we are now being called back and pushed forward from being consumers to producers. Amen. Right? It's one thing to just come to church on Sunday and hear the word and receive the word. But now it's time for us to take that word and do something with Amen. that word. Right? We're not just hearing it. Right? We're strong. We're, we're building ourselves up because there is so much more work that God's calling us to do in the future. With that, I will end and just uh, say, lastly, God showed Moses a preview of the promise. God showed the people the plan. Write that down. God showed the people the plan. And then the last thing he did was God encouraged and strengthened the new pastor. He did. He strengthened and encouraged Joshua so that Joshua could walk in the calling that was on his life. That's for me. I was encouraged in this study because, like I said, Anytime transition happens, there's this tension that occurs. And so even in our time together, God is helping us, I believe, to focus less on ourselves, less on the doubt, and more on the confidence in who he is. More on his constancy, his consistency, his steadfastness, and what's that last word? His immutability. Yeah, y'all gonna be saying that from now on. God is immutable. <laughs> Amen. Amen. That that's it, Satan.
Any questions, any comments, any concerns, any thoughts? Those who are watching, I'm not sure if you have any, you can submit those and we'll get back to you with them. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, I, I wanted to say that I like how you say um, that now we're to move and begin doing more. And uh, um, Pastor Bright prophetic word about the increase, the overflow of the community and people coming in. So, like you're saying, you know, get ready because they're coming. Right. We spoke it. So, yeah. So, we don't want to be unprepared exactly. for that, right? So, it's like, don't wait to get ready. I mean, that was, oh, I said that was the disciples' issue when the man brought his son to them. And Jesus was up on the mountain with the, the, the you know, Peter, James, and John. They weren't ready, right? They hadn't prepared themselves to, to meet such a task, but God has given us grace, right? And, and saying, listen, now's the time. We can do it. We can serve the Lord. Amen. And, and I'm believing uh, for that. Amen. Anyone else before we close? Amen. Let's uh, have a word of prayer and we'll be out. Gracious and heavenly God, our Father, we thank you. We praise you, honor you, and glorify you for what you've said and shared in this time of study. God, we know that transition is inevitable in this lifetime, that we will experience uh, beginnings and endings. But wherever we find ourselves, at the beginning or the end of it, Father, we know that you're there. And because you're there, we can be confident and assured, Father, that your will will be done. We can trust to follow your way because, God, we will have used your wisdom. Pray, Father, for these that have gathered tonight. I ask, oh God, that you would meet any need that may exist. God, that you would continue to strengthen this community, our church, and the local uh, uh, body, Father, and, and those that we are to serve. May we, Father, be your hands and feet. May we not be afraid, God. May we walk boldly, proclaiming your good and great gospel. May we share the message of hope that is found in Jesus the Christ. We thank you, God, for our Moses. We thank you for his faithfulness and commitment to you. We thank you, God, for what he's done in this house. And we thank you, God, for the reward that you have for him on the other side of this, God. We thank you, O oh God, that you have kept this ministry for 30 years, God. And we pray, O oh God, that you would keep it for 30 more. Yes. God, we're looking forward, God, to moving in the new phase, in the next phase of ministry. And, Father, we prepare now. We don't wait. We prepare now, God to serve your people, and to serve you, Father, most importantly. So, God, we ask that you will get the glory. You will get the honor. You would praise. Father, we pray for our, our, our church family that may be uh, in peril, that may be struggling, that may be sick or infirmed or in need. God, we ask that you would bless them and touch them where they are now. We continue to lift up to you our nation, God. We continue to lift up to you uh, those that are suffering uh, from violent acts of terror. We lift up to you, Father, the hospital uh, and those that lost their lives, God. We pray for the mind and the heart of human beings, God, that your Holy Spirit, Father, as it was on Pentecost, would be poured out again, God, on all flesh, Father, that you would move in this way, God, so that your will, your will alone is done on earth as it is in heaven. God, we know that you're able we know that you can. So we stand as intercessor, God, asking you, O oh Father, to have your way. Have your way. Raise up a standard against the enemy, God. Protect the vulnerable. Protect those, God, who are, who are in harm's way. We pray, O oh God. We seek your will. We seek your kingdom. We seek you, God, in this season, in this manner. God, you get the glory. You get the honor. You get the praise. It's in the mighty, the matchless, the majestic, the holy, righteous name of Jesus, who is the Christ, that we pray. We said amen. Amen. Amen and amen. amen. All right, y'all. God bless you.